wisdom, prudentia, justice, justicia, temperance, temperantia, courage, fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. Howdy, and welcome to the Sunday Stoic Podcast. I'm Steve, coming to you from beautiful, rainy, swampy Conway, Arkansas, where it's currently storming outside and it's flooding so badly I can't even flush my toilet because we're on a septic system. Uh, more than you need to know, but that's the exciting world we're in today. <laughs> uh, my son is still healing up from a tonsillectomy. It's been a little rough. Uh, I failed a few times at my practice of stoicism, just trying to maintain cool with him screaming and all the other stresses associated with the healing process, but we are, we are getting better. Today we're going to hear from Seneca again, continuing the theme. Uh, we're going to he- talk about his essay on the shortness of life. Now, I've talked about this essay in previous episodes, so I'm not going to do a super long episode this week, but we will um, hear a bit from him. And I have a guest reader today. It's been a while, and uh, David from Australia is reading for us. Um, I'm going to put a link to his website in the show notes. He's involved in the publishing business, and and I think you should check out his website. So thank you so much for contributing this week. If anyone else would like to read for the show, uh, just contact me, and we'll find something for you to read, uh, sundaystoic at gmail.com. So Seneca emphasizes throughout this essay that we often complain about how short life is. And of course, for some of us, it is woefully short. Some of us die much much younger than we might expect or, or prefer. But no matter how long our life, we can accomplish something, typically, uh, if we apply ourselves and we don't waste what time we do have. We have no control over how much time we get, but we can control what we do with the time that we have. It's not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. Life is long enough. And it's been given to us in generous measure for accomplishing the greatest things, if the whole of it is well invested. But when life is squandered through soft and careless living, and when it's spent on no worthwhile pursuit, death finally presses, and we realise that life, which we didn't notice passing, has passed away. So it is. The life we're given isn't short, but we make it so. We're not ill-provided, but we're wasteful of life. Just as impressive and princely wealth is squandered in an instant when it passes into the hands of a poor manager, wealth, however modest, grows through careful deployment if it is entrusted to a responsible guardian. Just so our lifetime offers ample scope to the person who maps it out well. Why do we complain of nature? She has shown herself kindly. Life, if you know how to use it, is long. But one man is possessed by an avarice that is insatiable, another by a toilsome devotion to tasks that are useless. One man is besotted with wine, another is paralyzed by sloth. One man is exhausted by an ambition that always hangs upon the decision of others, another driven on by the greed of the traitor, is led over all lands and all seas by the hope of gain. Some are tormented by a passion for war, and are always either bent upon inflicting danger upon others, or concerned about their own. Some there are who are worn out by voluntary servitude and a thankless attendance upon the great. Many are kept busy either in the pursuit of other men's fortune or in complaining of their own. Many following no fixed aim, shifting and inconstant and dissatisfied are plunged by their fickleness into plans that are ever new. Some have no fixed principle by which to direct their course, but fate takes them unawares while they loll and yawn. Men do not suffer anyone to seize their estates, and they rush to stones and arms if there is even the slightest dispute about the limit of their lands, yet they allow others to trespass upon their life. 
Nay, they themselves even lead in those who will eventually possess it. No one is to be found who is willing to distribute his money, yet among how many does each one of us distribute his life? After my fiftieth year, I shall retire into leisure. My sixtieth year shall release me from public duties. And what guarantee, pray, have you that your life will last longer? Who will suffer your course to be just as you plan it? Are you not ashamed to reserve for yourself only the remnant of life, and to set apart for wisdom only that which cannot be devoted to any other business? How late it is to begin to live just when we must cease to live. What foolish forgetfulness of mortality to postpone wholesome plans to the fiftieth and sixtieth year, and to intend to begin life at a point which few have attained. We waste most of our life. At least, you know, that's what uh, Seneca suggests, and I think I agree with uh, the way I have lived my life, perhaps you as well. If we're not deliberate about how we live, if we just do what feels good and we do what other people do, then we absolutely waste a huge portion of our life. First of all, we go to work every day to pay for a car and a house so we can live close to work and get to work. It's kind of a circular argument, if you will, that is a little weird. However, if you're lucky enough to have a job that's fulfilling in other ways, it's probably worth it. And of course, you have to eat. So trying to find the balance there between satisfaction and what you have to do to survive. And here in the U.S., you have to you know, work to get basic uh, health care and things like that as well, of course. Um, now, I found a few stats online, and you can Google these yourself. They're all over. I didn't find the actual paper where these were published, so they t could be taken with a grain of salt, but I think they're probably fairly accurate. Now, this is for Americans. I did not find a global number, but in the U.S., 162 minutes a day is what the average person spends on their cell phone. Okay, 162 minutes a day. And that's a lot of that's on apps and, and social media. So let's extrapolate on that a little bit. That's about 19 hours a week. That's about half of an average work week. <laughs> 82 hours a month. And if you extrapolate out, that's roughly, this is roughly 980 hours a year on your phone. That's enough time for an English speaker to gain basic fluency in languages like Spanish or German. So you could be speaking another language if you just put your phone away and focus on some other task. Uh, Seneca would recommend we focus that time on living wisely, studying philosophy, and not dividing our time up amongst uh, all the things that suck our time, including TV, the internet, so on and so forth. Now, we can use the, these things as tools to become better people, but a lot of time we just use it to zone out. Now, if we add in the four hours a day that the average American spends watching TV, okay, now add that to the amount of time people spend on their phones as well, think of all the things some someone who's who's wasting that much time could accomplish for themselves and for their neighbors and all of humanity just by applying that time in a more wise fashion if we have a strong life philosophy it can act as a guide to help us to live a worthwhile life we don't want to end up at the end of our lives realizing that the only thing we're experts at is watching television, or we are really good phone users. We are excellent consumers. Why don't we end our lives knowing that we were pretty good specimens of the human race? We were good to our neighbors. We helped folks when they needed it, but we didn't just waste our lives pursuing purposeless events and tasks. All that time on, on TV all that time on our phones. It's like our life could be like the Nile or the Amazon River, strong, vibrant, important, and useful. Accomplishing great things. But we tend what we tend to do is allow ourselves to our our river of life to divide itself up into too many tributaries, right? 
We're flowing into all these channels and streams instead of one strong flow with, with a purpose and a direction and a philosophy. We spread ourselves out too thin until every moment of our life is nothing but a shallow, sluggish creek that someone could wade across. Whereas if we have purpose, we could be that strong, vibrant, living, rushing river with a massive purpose and a massive impact in this world. Now, there's no guarantee how much time we have, so we have to make use of now. Virtue can only be applied now, not in the past, and we don't know about the future. The future is this figment of our imagination we have now. So don't deny yourself a useful and good life. Live now. Do good in the world, but not randomly. Use your philosophy as a guide to make precise prudent decisions on how you live, be prudent, and live well now. We'll let Charlie end this episode. Okay, Jim. Welcome to the Stoic Cosmopolis, a podcast for Sunday Stoic patrons. What? Hey patrons, this is Steve, and who's this? Charles. Charles. I'm sitting here with my boy Charlie, he's on my lap, and uh, I was being mean, I made him, him and mommy go hide in the bedroom for a couple minutes while I worked on my podcast, because... Someone's really loud, and it's hard to record. Who's really loud? Me. Yeah, yeah. I say daddy, daddy, daddy. Yeah, you say daddy, daddy, daddy. Can I record with you? We are recording right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, the people we're talking to right now are very nice people that listen to the show Daddy makes, and they donate a little money.